We've got uh, Chris Bishop. He's the managing editor of Forbes Africa. He joins us in studio now to talk about the latest edition of Forbes Africa magazine. Uh, I, Chris, I don't know, you started when you were like 16, I'm sure. To make sure that oh, there would not be, yeah, yeah, make sure that there wouldn't be any thinning. He's got a well, full head of well, hair. I think it's a genetic thing. I mean, none of the men in my family lost their hair. I'm mm. quite mm. fortunate that way. You never, never worry worried about, about, about it. Okay. Well, not really, no, because it's never really sort of fallen out, you know. Mm. So, uh, and always my hair. I mean, you could um, brush something with it. You know, it's always been thick, thick, thick. So. Did you put oil on your hair when you were a boy? Uh, no, no, not at all. I didn't put anything on my hair till I grew older. Mm. I put a little bit of. Uh, Gel or the old bit of wax. I think we're looking at a, a hair special for yeah. Forbes. <laughs> 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 special. <laughs> well, um, the cover story. Yep. Um, it's uh, I thought was one of my favourites, and it's actually historic. It's the first ever triple cover we've done with triple millionaires. Okay. We've got the gentleman from uh, Brimstone Investments in Cape Town. One of the the watchwords for Forbes Africa is universal. If you most of the people who read the magazine live in West Africa, live in East Africa, we have to have a magazine. A story that everyone can relate to and I think this is one here mm -hmm. basically people who came up with um, an idea to invest poor people's money or people had to walk to work as we say in the story and turn them into uh, into millionaires it's one of the great great stories of our time and um, it's about three people I'm hoping I'll see the cover on the screen in a minute but um, it's uh, Mushtaq Bray Fred Robertson and a guy called Laurie Brosin these the are brother. three familiar names. Three familiar names. And uh, they had a very rough time in making money. Um, they had terrible things happening to their company. They had two recessions. Their share price crashed to the bottom. Yeah. They were offered to be bought out. But uh, as one of them said, if we'd done that, we'd have to run out of Cape Town because everyone we had everybody's money. But it's an interesting story. I mean, also the work that the journalists put into it to actually dig out all the, the backstories. I mean, for instance, there's a fellow who owns a service station who's now one of their millionaires. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pulled him one day, get some petrol, and they said, hey, we're starting an investment company. Are you interested? And he goes, all right. Went in, got his checkbook, and he wrote them out a check for 12,000 rand on the back of a brown Audi car, gave it to them. And uh, now he's a millionaire. So wow. it's fantastic. And they, they different kinds of uh, entrepreneurs, business people. They're not all the same. No, the I mean uh, basically uh, the three uh, together. I mean they're all from three completely different worlds, three completely different backgrounds. Mm. The only thing they had in common was this idea of in '94 when the the change came here. They said, well, ordinary people. People with not much money should get into this investment thing as well. But what else have you got? Yeah, well, I, actually, this I, picture you, here, you, I, I mean, I must what, hold I'll, it up for you, too, Mia. Thank you. Yeah. I, was, I was about to say, you know, you're talking, <laughs> let's zone in on that particular. Uh, show us that cover in case it doesn't come up on screen. Well, no, the, that guy's not it, bald, it, eh? No, he's not <laughs> bald. But no. the journalist who wrote this is a Zimbabwean, in fact, who lives in New York. She said, Chris, put this in your magazine and all the women of Africa will love you. I don't know what she means, but... Um, you do love you, Chris. There's the picture. So tell us, who is that? It's uh, Daniel Adongo. Okay. He's a rugby player from Kenya. Um, he played here for the Bulls, I think, some stage. But now he's gone over to the States, and he plays gridiron mm. uh, over there. And uh, It's a lot rougher than it's a lot rougher. sevens. Well, he's exactly. And he um, is an incredible story. I mean, he says he's, he's a man full of brutality, full of aggression, who's over there getting absolutely, uh, well... He, uh, they say that he's uh, stomping his way through the gridiron system. It's just one of those nice little African diaspora stories yeah. that, uh, that we do come up with. But um, Let's see the front cover. The Did front you... cover. Here we are. This is the, the guys. Those You've are the got, three uh, guys. Yes, mm -hmm. that's Mushtaq Bray, Fred Robertson, and also uh, Laurie Brosen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, completely different worlds. I mean, Laurie Brosen came from a family firm in the suburbs of Johannesburg. Fred used to sell insurance door to door. Mm -hmm. He used to sleep overnight at uh, petrol stations in the Northern Cape and give the guys five rands who'd go and wash in the morning and then go and see his clients. Now he's on the board of Old Mutual instead of selling for them. Uh, I was told a story by a friend of mine who's a financial advisor and he said when he started out that he went to sell insurance and they said they took him to a building and they said, you know, block of flats and they said, don't come out of here until you've got 30 prospects written down. Mm. And if you haven't, you're not made it for this business. How's that? Well, that's what Fred said. Knocking it's, on doors. It's a rough business. And all three of them have been through the mill of life. And that's probably why they've uh, managed to stick together and build a good business. They've mm. all got different skills. Mm. But basically, they listed on the stock exchange, I think it was back in 1998. And they got all the people, people like District 6 in Cape Town, whatever, all together. And they had a live link up. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, with the JSE here, and they went through and uh, the people saw their money going onto the stock exchange. And as they all joke, it dropped a few points in the first uh, hour or so, and everyone came to them and said, "Hey, what are you doing with our money?" What else do you have, Chris? And talking about that story of uh, you know insurance, a guy having to make sure they got all these prospects. Thank goodness for RDR. But what else do you no, have? We got plenty, so we went heavily this month on the uh, the Nigerian elections. Obviously, everyone's okay. talking about it. Plus, we've got Boko Haram. Uh, we found a journalist who lives right up in the northeast, oh. near, in Yola province, who is actually there um, telling us how it happens, how these guys sweep in and take it over and, a town. And we need that. You know, yeah. I was up at our offices in Nigeria, and you just realize how big a country Nigeria is. And in Lagos, there isn't a sense of this crisis because it's far away. Well, luckily, we managed to get that. I mean, we called it the people for whom hell lurks around the corner. Oh. Because the whole point is, what we don't understand from here is that suddenly scores of guys come in armored cars, jeeps, and vehicles, take over the entire place, put up a flag, and that's it. They take over. And some of the horrors that go with it, you'll find it uh, in there. But, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Chris, uh, leaving it on a note of West Africa. That was Chris Bishop, the managing editor of Forbes Africa magazine.